Hello and welcome to Autocar Dialogues powered by Reliance General Insurance. In this series of very interesting discussions, we talk to dealer principals across the country on the automotive sector. And the buzzword these days is green mobility. But green mobility really goes beyond just the automobile. Dealerships also have to go green. What are the initiatives? What are the challenges? What are the returns? And that's what we're going to discuss in today's panel. And we have with us from the Northeast, Mr. John Lalpeka from GIG Motors, which incidentally stands for God is Great. And we have Mr. Ankit Podar from Podar Car World. And we have Mr. Nishant Goel from Dhanshri Auto Venture. Uh, welcome. And um, I'm you. sure that you all are all tired of hearing green mobility, considering I think None of you are in the EV arena just yet. But still, I'm sure that manufacturers are pushing you all to make green in initiatives in the dealerships. What are the initiatives you all have started making? What are the things that you do to make things more green? I am not really, <coughs> uh, so I can't really say that dealerships, I mean, the OEMs are really you know, asking us or pushing us to go greener and greener. Yes, there are initiatives like going paperless and, uh, you know, the uh, water that we supply. So there's a lot of ETPs and STPs and everything that we need to put across. However, uh, it's just taxing. It's, it's, it's taking a lot of work to do that. So there are green initiatives. Uh, we're not, like you said, that Maruti is still not there in electric vehicles, greenery kind of a thing. But we are into hybrid, which is the way that they're taking the initiative. And I feel, yeah, that's, that's that. Right now. Yeah. Uh, do you feel that there is a need for government regulation to come in? Because there's a lot of debate on green mobility, right? We talk about going green, but it really should be the entire process, yes. not just yes. the automobile, correct? Mm -hmm. So do you feel that there is a need for government regulation to sort of um, make it harder for y'all and make, make you know make y'all do a little bit more to make the whole process green? Yeah, that's right, because like, uh, once the government started implementing something, only we can obey it, we can do it, the rules and reg regulations. Without that, we can just like simply implement something, right? Yeah. Then for I mean, us, so like, I tried, I mean, like yeah. John, John's saying, so I tried going paperless about six years back. It's not that easy to do it. I mean, my, my staff is going to need a lot of paper, they will not allow without paper they will need those visiting cards i applied those cards with the qr codes to give you know so so that the number also gets saved in the customer's yes, phone yes. once you scan the qr it doesn't work somehow or the other i mean it's it, it takes a it's, lot of time it's, it's for adaptation technology matters also right yeah most of the so there are big challenges yeah. yeah and if the government so you you just said that and it's it's really uh, I'm having like a minor, minor heart attacks when you say that government should make it <laughs> mandatory or, you know, pushing it because it's already very, very expensive for us. Yes. Uh, I'm not just talking about automobile. I'm in the hotel, hospitality industry as well. They make it so difficult for us, uh, pollution control and this and that, right? So let's go to Gantok for that matter. They have a central STP. So you don't need to provide an STP in your property. They have a central STP. So government should be looking at that maybe I'm talking about that, okay, you have certain localities where you have a local STP made by the government. Agar main apne se agar karke de raun, and the drainage water, who's going to check that? No one comes in. Yes, maybe they check it sometimes, but we know the babus, right? So it's just that if the drainage system goes across and there's a locality may STP is put across, then maybe it works better. So instead of us spending where we are already spending so much on taxes, automobile dealers spend huge amount of taxes. And not only that, uh, the the amount of infrastructure. Infrastructure, yes. yes. The, the infrastructure, infrastructure cost is really, really very yes. high. If we go for you know uh, uh, green technologies, so at present uh, there are government authorities and regulatory uh, regulatory boards, so who are trying, you know, to. Uh, to, to create awareness about uh, you know this sustainability uh, evolving sustainability but the thing is they are only penalizing right mm -hmm. they, they are no uh, there's incentives. no incentive there are no yes, incentives yes, yes. Yeah. like uh, if we go uh, for a solar power plant in our mm -hmm. uh, absolutely in our dealerships so it will cost around 3 lakhs per kilowatt hour yes so yes. that is too high although there is an incentive for solar power plants what about uh, we can do uh, rainwater harvesting? You know, we use 
lot of water, lots Correct. of water for washing and cleaning of yes, our, yes. you know, car and our infrastructure. So we can save water also. What about uh, the disposal of our scrap or used lubricants? So is there any policy for that, or is there any incentive for that? You know, they are penalizing, but the thing is, this is India. India is jugar ki country. Yeah, we, can, we, we, we can save ourselves from penalty. But as a businessman, if they give yeah, some if, incentive, yeah, if, so if they this can will be subsidize a, it, yes, kind of a, a kind of subsidy. Uh, yes. So yeah. I think there should be some kind of subsidy if uh, any dealership, you know, go for environment friendly infrastructure and technology. Yes. I think that should be, I think, you know, dealerships across board, as you're saying, it should be for most industries because if there is an incentive to own a green vehicle and yes, there is yes. a subsidy for, for example, a green vehicle. The same yeah. like electric vehicles, which they have done it. Yeah. So like in uh, Tata Motors, we have good also, right? range of electric vehicles. We have Tiago, yes. Tigo, yes, Punch, yes. Nexon, and now uh, upcoming vehicle is Curve, right? Yeah. So we are selling good amount of electric vehicles. People are aware about, you know, this is environment friendly. Hmm. But it's so expensive. The it, technology it, it is, is so expensive. It is expensive. But what we can do is, I have incorporated th uh, six EVs uh, for our day-to-day -day activity, for our employees to move around. Hmm. And I'm saving around 1.5 lakhs rupees per month on fuel. Hmm. So this is what we are doing. And I have a satisfaction that I am doing something for the environment. Yeah, You're setting the example. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, the thing is, I'm uh, saving on cost and I'm saving the environment also. I mean, he spoke about solar energy as well, right? So solar has been there for a long time now in India. I mean, maybe more than 10 years. But 10 years ago also when I wanted to put a solar, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, panels mm. that I wanted to put, it. It, more than the cost, it was the space that is required. Yes, so the exactly. space which is required for one kilowatt is about 80 to 100 square feet. Mm. Correct. That's not a joke. 100 square feet space for one kilowatt. Mm. And for a automobile dealership, I think uh, if, 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 if we're just talking about an, a, a showroom, I, I think we'll need at least 70, 80 kilowatts, mm. right? How do you provide so much of square footage? So your all all your terrace is gone mm. if you're going to put solar uh, panels there. So the technology there hasn't changed either. I feel that technology would have changed, should have changed long back. Mm. We're talking about electric now. Okay, I mean, see, we can't disagree with everything, <laughs> but then there has to be every single point where CNG is concerned. Hybrid is there. Um, there's windmill to care. We don't have in we India, but have. then there are so many other energies which are also green, right? But we are, right now, the trend is electric. Correct. Uh, and I don't even <laughs> think we have enough uh, electric power in the country to supply with Sorry. that. Yeah. Not only that, the infrastructure support also. Yeah. I am I'm on the same page as you. I mean, if you go right outside the biggest industrial city, Mumbai, and you go to Bhivandi, which is a big industrial hub, there isn't 24-hour electricity. So. Uh, how do people function? I think those are the problems we need to address and electric infrastructure for sure. But uh, like I'm saying, I think while we talk about green mobility, are customers that walking into your showrooms, are they really aware? Do they ask? Do they question? Um, we have a lot of debate on green from source to, you know, uh, to end point. But is the customer asking the same questions? Do you think that they no, are bothered about? Uh, no, no, not no. at all. I can speak for this side, although uh, one would imagine that uh, in the Northeast, people would be more concerned because it's all green. Yeah. Uh, but I think there is a big gap in customers' uh, awareness of this. They want electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles just because they, they know that they could save on fuel. And why a lot of people are not buying electric vehicles is because of the cost difference, right? It's m more than one and a half times of a normal uh, engine. So hybrid is making more sense. Hybrid, we in Maruti, we normally, now our salespeople, one of my salespeople, he made this, uh, you know, dialogue and he said, uh, Sir, this electric vehicle is not charging ki zarurat nahi hai. Hmm. right? So that was a very good, so any which way. So electric, uh, hybrid vehicles are selling because of the technology, I mean, uh, because of the saving that the customers are doing. But they're not really so concerned for the green initiative. Yes. I mean, like, I, I tried giving paperless 
bills to customers. The uh, Assam government, in fact, has done a wonderful thing. You don't get an RC now. You don't mm. get a physical RC. It's all in that app. Digital. Yeah, it's mm. all digital. So it's nice. Marathi is also taking a lot of initiatives in going digital. However, paper still is consumed and in huge quantities. For example, in, Kai, uh, uh, in terms of like the service station, sometimes mm. like most of the customers, if they just send you like the digital kind of the the bills, bills. Yeah. they mm -hmm. might not accept it here. Yeah, yeah. Like notice, we are still very lack of something. Yeah. We can say, but, but they your, wanted yeah. to see the paper also. Yeah, if you go about yeah, talk about like the paperless, people still think that authenticity yeah, is yes. with the paper with, with the with stamp. The paper. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Last so, year we so implemented this uh, paperless uh, transaction system. So uh, in our dealership, the paper that we want to retain is in the digital form, yeah. is in the yeah. soft copy format. Okay, so. What we have done, we have reduced just 50% of you know paper usage. Because now the customer the still wants his Customer still yes. wants. Customer are not aware about the, you know, uh, this initiative, Go Green initiative, or you know, this is environment friendly. But we can take a proxy. The customer who are buying electric vehicles, after buying or before buying, they study about that vehicle. Correct. And they become aware about, you know, uh, the environment friendly car or mm -hmm. you know the system by which we can go green so there are set of people who have already bought electric vehicles so what they tend to say wo ye nahi bolte ki i purchased an electric vehicle because mere ko cost cutting karna tha what they say to you know their immediate friends or relatives see i am also a contributor to uh, <laughs> greener world mm -hmm. i am saving the planet <laughs> this is the way they project themselves. Mm. So, uh, there will be awareness, but it will take time. It will take time, yeah. yeah. At dealerships, even if we are going paperless, it's, it's not actually uh, saving us money, it's costing us more. Because technology is still expensive. Correct. There's a lot of storage space that is required, yes. right? There's Correct. a lot of apps that you need to buy. There's so much of authentication that you need to do. And above all is the education of the people that yeah. you have right now. Yeah. People have this, to... Uh, Adaptation first. This Adaptation. is what I was going to ask you that to actually go green and I'm not talking, we're talking about paperless which is one thing but even in your service centers to educate mm. the entire staff to make, you know, dispose of all the lubricants better or to use less amount of lubricant or you know, save water. It's, it's a different education because people are just so used to doing Absolutely. things a certain yes. way. So you have to invest in that. So there are places where you save money where it is easier to you know implement this mm. so let's say for example used oil mm. right so to dispose of that well that saves us money because we sell the used oil as well mm. so it makes money for us mm. so that they that it's not that difficult but to stop usage of water and the amount of water that is used for washing a vehicle yes, is yes. it's mm. not a joke mm. i mean although yes we have etps and we recycle mm. the water and we use it again but then the mud is still there where do we dispose that off Hmm. So it is difficult, the education part is the most difficult part I feel, hmm. apart from the cost factor which is of, of course there. Yeah. You are the, already in the EV arena. <laughs> yes. Yeah, sorry, you wanted to say something. So, first. Uh, I was saying, there are different set of you know, dealerships. There are big dealerships, there are small dealerships also. What about small dealerships? How will, will they invest? All right. So this is a big question. Yeah. So some dealers can invest in solar power, in you know, to go paperless, to recycle the water, to dispose the scrap and lubricants. There, there are a lot, lot of things to do. But what about small dealerships, right? So uh, the cost involved in this uh, initiative has to go down. Yeah, I think it's the same story that we see in India uh, for hybrids, right? People didn't adopt them because they were expensive. Now that we are getting subsidies, there's a bigger adoption in hybrids and that needs to be the same story for dealerships as yeah, I understand. Like, it has to be a little bit of hand-holding from the manufacturer, yes. a little bit of hand-holding from the government yes, yes. and only then will the whole system work yes. for, for you to go green. But do you think that there really is this big green future that we are all imagining uh, or talking about in this country, you know, the dates are being thrown that by so-and-so date we will all be green, mobility will be. 
uh, especially in the regions where you all are, where it's very hilly, the terrain, you know, it's difficult. Uh, EVs still don't have a lot of range. Do you think that the adoption rate will happen as it is being imagined? See, uh, I'm from like Mizoram. Uh, I think like topography is also very different from other part of the Northeast also. See, uh, for me, as far as like that concern, I don't have a future of like, I can say 10 years. Mm. But see, if you talk about like education first, people are not aware it like how to go ahead. Yeah. That's the main concern also. See, now infrastructure is the next level. See, for getting the good infrastructure is going to be the next level again. Yeah. Because I, we, the people have to educate first. Then only the infrastructure. See, as far as India concerned also, we are not having any kind of infrastructure. If, for example, in the mainland India also, I lived in the northeast part of the India. Mm. And we are still very lack of the infrastructure. Because of that, I don't see the like... Correct. The, near future things coming very yeah, fast yes yeah. yes i sure hope so that whatever government is deciding or the dates are thrown i sure hope so for our next generations to come mm. that you know we do adopt to the greener environment everything uh, but you I, I really don't know if the dates are going to you know we're going to be succe successful in the uh, matching of those dates that has yes. been thrown around but i really hope so yes i would hope so but the target needs to be set right so mm. Uh, you know, government has set targets, no issue by, say, 2030, we will be uh, doing like this, we will be uh, emitting less carbon. The thing is, uh, you were talking about adoption of EVs. So, uh, like in hilly areas also, Arunachal is hilly area, so we have good set of customers in hilly areas. And uh, for us, we have uh, two type of customers for EV. One set of customer buys EV for their status symbol. Mm. And another one who has, you know, a lot of running. So uh, the daily run for them is like 80 to 100 kilometers. So they are buying EVs to, you know, save the cost. Mm. So uh, I think, you know, uh, in future, when the battery prices will go down, when the motor prices will go down, and the technology is very nascent at the mm. present, present uh, at present. So. It, the prices of EV will also come down in future. Hmm. And more than passenger, I feel that commercial vehicles, if we convert into electric, give them more incentives. Hmm. Maybe that would, you know, help. Or not EV exactly. I'm I'm saying the greener, uh, greener, greener fuels. Yeah. But is there a need you think then for a lot more alternatives? Like we're pinning our, our hopes on one alternative, EV. There is hybrid now. I mean people are talking hydrogen fuel cell there are there are you know CNG for example that is greener as well and we already have it existent in our country so do you think that there needs to be a larger adoption uh, and despite having CNG uh, has it caught on in the Northeast and you know is there enough infrastructure for it no I don't think so I mean I, I think gas is available gas should not be a problem here yes, yes. But uh, where are the stations? Because Assam itself is producing the gas, right? Yeah. But there's no station at all. Yeah, so no we, we just we just got the third station here right now, and I'm not even sure if they have gas there. <laughs> so, I mean, Agartala has it, and it's been going on since donkey years now, and it's quite successful. I'm, uh, but it's just surprising that in a small northeast, in eight, st eight, eight sisters now we say it, right? Sikkim mm. is also part of northeast mm. now. So... Uh, out of that, there's only one state which has it. So I, now people are coming up with it. And I, if CNG is made, I mean, that's one of the uh, lowest uh, investment fuel, right? Correct. And uh, that also saves you a lot of cost as well. It's not just going green. You're also saving money. Um, and uh, the co prices of the vehicles are also not... Are, are you yeah, saying yeah, any? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, no, are you no, saying, no, no. No, you're not just saying any. So I, I think there's only a very minor difference, minor difference about 20, 30, 30,000 rupees maybe. Yes. And also it's got both, right? It's not yeah. just CNG, you CNG and, and patrol. 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 So you've got both. So you're not even scared about... So my anxiety no range would be, anxiety. Yeah, my yes, anxiety yes. is the range anxiety. Mm -hmm. Even though I know 200 kilometers, I'm not going to do at once. Yeah. But yet, it's always there at the back of my head that, okay, it can be closed. So that's, that's not there in CNG with patrol as well, right? Yes. So, yes, CNG, if we try and ensure that throughout the country, CNG is available and everyone is uh, adapting to that, 
then maybe we can think about the next and the next and the next. Everything together, I, I'm, I'm not very sure if that, that's yeah, going to Now so we much. talk about everything, right? Like even the government also. We, we don't know where to go also in terms. Yeah. And see, we are all young uh, uh, people here and we are not that, so I'm, I'm not going to go on the political side yes. of this. I'm not into politics any which yes, ways. Yes. But th these are things that we are facing on a day-to-day -day basis. That's what we are talking about right now. Yeah. Yes. No, fair enough. But I think what he means to say is that we need a stable policy, yeah. a, yes, a direction. Yes. Right. You know, which is, I think, something that the automotive industry has suffered through many phases, yeah, I mean, yeah, we've yeah. jumped from BS4 Absolutely, to yeah. BS6. We made big, big changes very, very quickly, and it's not always easy to make these big changes and adapt. And a big part of that is interpretation. Like I said before when we met, uh, uh, there was this, um, I forget that, um, uh, above 1,000 uh, cc's, you have to have so much of safety norms and everything. There was something which had come across about five, six years back, mm -hmm. and the interpretation that the people here did, the, uh, one of the advocates, he interpreted that, that now more than 1,000 uh, cc vehicles will not get sold, you cannot register that. And we could not sell for a month. Mm. That interpretation was completely wrong. It was just mm. giving you a target that, okay, going forward you have to meet with certain norms. And they just stopped it, mm -hmm. just like that. Yeah. No notice, no nothing, they just stopped it. So that's a big big gap there even yeah. if you're implementing something be very very clear about it in, in laws you can interpret any which ways right however you want to interpret it and whoever speaks strongly whoever has a better case would win right but yeah. then this is policy we're talking about this is not a law that we're talking about only so policies yeah. maybe we could do it even better with just the right interpretation okay this is what it means give it by example yeah but well, what do you think the future really, in your opinion, and I'll ask each one of you this question to answer. In your opinion, what do you think uh, the best way forward is? Uh, what are the initiatives that you think that are easily implementable to go green in the near future? See, according to me, sir, I have just mentioned it because, like, if you're talking about people, sometimes like people are buying EV just for a status, but for having a status, he have to clear it, like where he have to go and all everything. For EV, for example, if I'm gonna buy like the EV, I have to know where like my daily routines and daily route. Then only I can buy it. For example, for a normal kind of a person, EV is not a kind of a multi-purpose vehicles mm -hmm. because like he have to know the specific route where he have to go. Mm. Then only he can reach, right? Yeah. Because like the charging will be like different. You have to plan it. Yeah, plan it. For for that kind of a person, it might be a perfect. But for me, as far as now today concerned, I think might be hybrid is the next level mm -hmm. because it can save the fuels, save the environment also. What about you? Can you please repeat that question? I just got lost in between. <laughs> You're thinking of something yeah. else, but you can happily make the point with us. <laughs> no, 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 that's right. I was just thinking both of us, uh, being from Maruti, we are yes, you know, yes. saying hybrid. hybrid, hybrid. hybrid. <laughs> He's talking about uh, electric, He's from, so <laughs> electric cars, we are from hybrid. <laughs> but it's yeah. an interesting discussion to have, right? Because um, you are seeing one side of the perspective and he said, do you think that it's necessary to have hybrid as well. Let's ask him that question as the middle stepping ground and I'm so to sorry, get more people to EV. That, let me just clarify that Maruti is also coming up with electric. Correct. It's yes. just that it's this. They're just waiting it out and mm. they're gonna, you know, do it perfectly. Maybe I am not really, uh, I, I'm not very qualified to answer that question. So However, yes, hybrid is yeah, what Maruti is uh, doing right each now. Each and every OEM is coming up with electric vehicles. Yeah. So there is something related to electric vehicles. Why they are coming? And what is hybrid? Hybrid is something between ICE and EV. Correct. A combination of both, we can say. Yeah. Right. So, EVs are more greener than hybrid. Mm. We can say that. How? But that's what I'm talking about. How? If you talk about like the Where combination, the, the combination might be much better, right? Where's the supply of electric? Yeah, How do you no. make electric? You make it with coal plants. <laughs> that is no, not, not green. No, no, not 100%. And what government is working on? Government is working on hydroelectric. So that is the big debate in our country for sure. That, yes. You know, and that, which is why we, we wanted to discuss today that when we're talking about source to end consumer, I mean, to be really green, it's not just about 
saying, okay, this is green, but where are we shifting the pollution source to? Yeah. Right. So I think that's what you're trying to say is that if your entire dependency is on electricity and it's only being produced by coal, then that is going to be the bigger source of, of exactly. pollution. But my point here is that's exactly what we're trying to say, that the entire process has to be green, which is why, you know, and as, as I've understood today that dealerships have started making small initiatives, but they're very small initiatives on their own. So there is a bigger discussion here that uh, I think we need to uh, understand that green to be green, uh, to have green mobility in our country, we need to have um, an entire perspective. Yeah, a I'm broader just adding view. on to that point, which he had mentioned actually uh, uh, when he started was the rainwater harvesting point, Correct. right? In dealerships, we are very recently there was this uh, law which had come across that you need to have a 35,000 liter minimum underground water tank, mm. which is for ETP water only, mm. right, the treated water only. Why not put a mandate on doing rainwater harvesting? Mm. That's gonna. So I, I do it any which ways. Mm. I mean, I mm. care about it, so I do it any which mm. ways. Yes. I've I've done, it, and it's not. Again, it's not cheap. It's really expensive. Mm. Rainwater harvesting is not just you know collecting the water and put, putting putting it in a tank. Yeah, you have to treat right? it. And yes. You have to treat it. Put it underground as well. I mean, not use it. It's yeah. just going to the nature again. Yeah. Right, yeah. to Mother Earth again. Yeah. And it's it's the same kind of thing that you take out water from, right? So when you do boring, you take out water from that and you're giving it back to the earth as well by doing rainwater harvesting and it's not cheap. But government is not really mandating that. Maybe they can think about mandating that rather than the other bigger, bigger, bigger initiatives. Mm -hmm. Because automobile dealerships, I think water is one of the major yes, yes. things. We are into the factory. So like uh, he was mentioning about the penalization and not the incentives, right? So I had this thing in my mind where I was coming from home. Uh, automobile workshops are considered uh, under Factories Act. Mm. And there's so much to do in that. Mm. But factories, the manufacturing, actual factories, they are incentivized. They've got subsidies. What do we have? Yeah. We don't have anything. There's no incentive. We have we, we are spending, spending, spending. Yes. Where where is the earning part? Yeah. Forget about everything else. Only the GST that we collect for the government. I'm saying give us one percent of that as incentive. Whatever we are collecting, the risk that we are taking, collecting that money, whether it be cash or it be Cash is still there, right? You can't just get rid of the whole cash. You still can pay to like rupees and in uh, maybe other parts, maybe more. But that cash, my person is taking from my dealership to the bank, right? If anything happens, it's my risk, Correct. right? And I'm collecting for the government as well. Why not pay me a 1% or 2% incentive on the GST? I would be happier to collect yeah, the GST. Yeah, it to a manufacturer only, right? Yeah, so not to us. we are in Factories Act, yes. but we're not getting the benefit out of it. Yeah. Exactly. There may be, you know, different uh, policies or different way to uh, pay back like incentives and all. So uh, this is a good option. One or two percent of GST can be paid. Correct. So I think uh, we've had an interesting discussion and we've kind of <laughs> veered off the topic, but we've discussed a lot of green mobility. Uh, it's been interesting, but what's very, very clear is I think we need stable policy. We need clear-cut guidelines. Uh, we need clear information being disseminated when policies are made. Um, and I think there's one thing that's very clear. The dealers want to be incentivized if they are to go green. But it's been an interesting discussion. Thank you so much for being Thank here with so us, much, gentlemen, and, and, and uh, enlightening us on what your perspective is. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.